Supplemental Security Income is a United States government program that provides stipends to low-income people who are either aged, blind, or disabled. Although administered by the Social Security Administration, SSI is funded from the U.S. Treasury General Funds, not the Social Security Trust Fund. SSI was created in 1974 to replace federal state adult assistance programs that served the same purpose. The restructuring of these programs was intended to standardize the eligibility requirements and level of benefits. The new federal program was incorporated into Title 16 of the Social Security Act. Today the program provides benefits to approximately 8 million Americans. History the legislation creating the program was a result of President Richard Nixon's effort to reform the nation's welfare programs. At that time, each state had similar programs under the Aid to the Blind, Aid to the Permanently and Totally Disabled, and Aid to the Elderly. The Nixon administration thought these programs should be federalized and run by the Social Security Administration. Thus, SSI was created to eliminate the differences between the states including different disability standards and income and resources requirements, which many perceived as irrational or unfair. President Nixon signed the Social Security Amendments of 1972 on October 30, 1972 which created the SSI program. The SSI program officially began operations in January 1974 by federalizing states' programs, designating the Social Security Administration to administer the SSI program. SSA was selected because it had been administering a nationwide disability program under the Social Security Disability Insurance Benefits Program since 1956 under the Old Age, Survivors, and Disability Insurance Programs associated with Federal Insurance Contributions Act payroll taxes. Eligibility, in order to be eligible to receive SSI benefits. Individuals must prove the following, they are 65 plus years of age or blind or disabled, and, they legally reside in one of the 50 states, the District of Columbia, Northern Mariana Islands, or are the child of military parent, s, assigned to permanent duty outside of the U.S., or are a student temporarily abroad, and, they have income and resources within certain limits, and, they have applied for the benefits. An individual may be ineligible if he or she is a resident of a public institution from the first day of a month through the last day of the same month, fails to apply for all other benefits for which they may be eligible, has an unsatisfied warrant or violates parole conditions, fails to give SSA permission to contact any financial institution for financial records, or is outside the U.S. for 30 consecutive days. Numerous restrictions have been placed on who is eligible for the benefit which is considered a welfare benefit. However, unlike Social Security benefits, earned work credits are not a requirement for SSI. If insured for disability and not currently receiving benefits, an applicant for SSI also applies for Social Security Disability Insurance benefits, and the standard by which applicants are judged to be disabled is virtually the same for both SSI and DIB. The decision as to whether an individual is disabled is made by the various state disability determination services, which contract with the federal government to make such determinations. Although the DDS is a state agency, they follow federal rules. This arrangement arose from the inception of OASDI, when some key members of Congress considered the Social Security Disability Program should be administered employing federalism, fearing expansion of the federal government equals aged, disabled, or blind equals, in order to be eligible for SSI, a person must meet the definition of being aged, disabled, or blind. Aged, being deemed aged consists of attaining the age of 65 or older. The Social Security Administration, like the United States government in general, follows English common law and considers a person to attain an age the day before their birthday. Disabled, being deemed disabled consists of meeting the general disability definition used by the Social Security Administration. Disability means inability to engage in any SGA, substantial gainful activity by reason of any medically determinable physical or mental impairment which can be expected to result in death, or has lasted or can be expected to last for a continuous period of not less than 12 months. 
the 1967 amendment specified that workers shall be determined to be under a disability only if the physical or mental impairment or impairments are of such severity that the individual is not only unable to do his previous work but cannot, considering his age, education, and work experience, engage in any other kind of substantial gainful work which exists in the national economy. This is regardless of whether any of these are true, such work exists in the immediate area in which the claimant lives. A specific job vacancy exists. The claimant would be hired if they applied for work. The statute also specifies that work which exists in the national economy means work which exists in significant numbers either in the region where such individuals lives or in several regions of the country. Substantial gainful activity, for the year 2015 is the ability to earn $1,090 gross income in a month's period for most disabled individuals, and $1,820 for those whose disability includes blindness. In addition, children under the age of 18 can be determined to be disabled for SSI purposes if the individual has a medically determinable impairment or combination of impairments that causes marked or severe functional limitation, S, and can be expected to result in death or has lasted or can be expected to last for a continuous period of not less than 12 months. Blind, being deemed blind consists of meeting the following definition, central visual acuity of 20-200 or less in the better eye with the use of a correcting lens. An eye which has a limitation in the field of vision such that the widest diameter of the visual field subtends an angle no greater than 20 degrees should also be considered as having a central visual acuity of 20-200 or less. In addition, for SSI purposes, an individual is considered blind regardless of the period of time they are expected to be blind or if they are performing substantial gainful activity. Equals income equals one of the requirements to receive SSI is that the individual's income must be below certain limits. These limits may vary based on the state in which the individual lives, his her living arrangement, the number of people living in the residence, and the type of income. The limit varies on all of these factors and is described below, in the section on benefit computation. Equals resources equals, another requirement for SSI is that the individual's resources be below a certain limit. This amount is $2,000 for a single individual and $3,000 for an individual and their spouse, $4,000 for a child applicant with one parent living in the household, and $5,000 for a child applicant with two parents living in the household. However, conditional benefits may be paid if a substantial portion of the resources are considered non-liquid, resources that cannot be sold within 20 working days if they agree to sell the resources at their current market value within a specified period and repay the money after the non-liquid property is sold. However, not all actual resources are counted in calculating an individual's or couple's resources for SSI purposes. The resource limits were originally set at $1,500 for an individual and $2,500 for couples in 1974, and were not linked to inflation. In 1987 the limits were raised to $1,800-$2,700, in 1988 to $1,900-$2,850 and in 1989 to $2,000-$3,000. Under current law they will remain at present levels indefinitely. There will soon be one exception to the general asset limit. On December 19, 2014, the ABLE Act of 2014 was signed into law, creating a new tax advantage to count under Section 529 of the Internal Revenue Code. Details of the new ABLE accounts, which will officially come into effect once the Treasury Department issues enabling regulations and states pass legislation regarding account administration, are, accounts can be established by, or on behalf of, a disabled person, provided that the beneficiary's disability began before age 26. Annual contributions to an account are limited to the same amount as the gift tax exclusion for an individual. The upper limit for lifetime contributions is the same as that for a 529 educational plan in the disabled person's state of residence. Contributions are not tax deductible, but income earned in an account is not subject to tax. Tax free withdrawals can be made for qualified disability expenses, including but not limited to education, housing, transportation, 
employment-related expenses, assistive technology, and health care. There are special statutory rules regarding the accumulation of ABLE account assets for individuals on SSI and Medicaid. The first $100,000 in an ABLE account is not counted as an asset for purposes of SSI eligibility. Once an ABLE account balance exceeds $100,000, the beneficiary's SSI payments are suspended until the account balance drops below $100,000. However, the beneficiary remains covered by Medicaid regardless of the account balance. Equals residency equals, SSI benefits are not paid solely to U.S. citizens, but may also be paid to aliens legally residing in the United States. Conversely, citizens may find themselves ineligible because they do not currently reside within the United States. Exceptions apply for children of military parent, S, who were born overseas, were disabled or became blind overseas, or first applied for benefits overseas and for students studying abroad who were eligible for SSI in the month prior to leaving the U.S., whose absence will be for less than one year, and who are studying to enhance their ability to perform substantial gainful activity, sponsored by an educational institution in the U.S., and would not be available to the individual in the U.S. Several restrictions apply to the eligibility of aliens however. These include being in a qualified alien category and meeting an exception condition. There are seven categories of qualified aliens based on Department of Homeland Security immigration statuses. This includes, those admitted as lawfully admitted for permanent residence, those granted conditional entry pursuant to Section 7 of the Immigration and Nationality Act, those paroled into the U.S. under Section 212 d. 5 of the INA for a period of at least one year, those who are refugees admitted to the U.S. under Section 207 of the INA, those granted asylum under Section 208 of the INA, those whose deportation is being withheld under Sections 243, H, or 241, B, 3, of the INA, Cuban Haitian entrance. Under Section 501, E of the Refugee Education Assistance Act of 1980. There are five exception conditions. These include, having already been receiving SSI on 81,996, having 40 qualifying credits when in LAPR status, being a veteran, active duty member of the U.S. military service, or being the spouse or dependent child of an individual who is having been lawfully residing in the U.S. on 81,996 and being blind and disabled. Equals collateral consequences of warrants, parole, and probation equals, since Congress enacted a Euro OE fugitive felons a Euro and parole probation violation provisions in 1996, the Social Security Administration has suspended benefits and charged overpayments to individuals receiving SSI on the basis of outstanding warrants. Enforcement of the provisions greatly increased in 2000, as SSA reached agreements with local law enforcement to match databases. Individuals who are fleeing to avoid prosecution or incarceration for a felony or violating probation or parole are statutorily prohibited from receiving SSI or Title II Social Security benefits. The Social Security Administration interpreted the statutes broadly to include individuals whose names were matched against a warrant database. Some individuals lost benefits even though the warrant in question was for a different person. For others, the presence of a warrant did not necessarily mean that an individual was fleeing, or that the individual had violated probation or parole. As a result of two legal cases, the SSA may not suspend benefits based merely on the evidence that a warrant had been issued. Back benefits were owed to hundreds of thousands of recipients. Benefit Details Payments for SSI are made for the first day of the month, unless the first of the month is on a weekend or a legal holiday, in which case the payment is made on the first day prior that is not a weekend or a legal holiday. The minimum benefit is $1. The SSI program, or Title 16 of the Social Security Act 1611, provides monthly federal cash assistance of up to $733 for an individual and $1,100 for a couple to help meet the costs of basic needs of food, shelter and clothing. In most states, 
SSI eligibility usually assures concurrent access to important medical coverage under the various state Medicaid programs and sometimes access to Section 8 housing benefits. In some states, supplemental payments are made by the state, increasing the cash assistance available through SSI. For example, the state of California, through its state supplementation program, increases the cash assistance, making the total 2015 SSI benefit $889.40 per month. SSI takes the income and resources of the applicant or recipient into consideration. People who have qualified for Social Security disability benefits may receive SSI during the five-month waiting period, if they meet the income and resource requirements. The resource limit for single individuals is $2,000 and, for married individuals, is $3,000. Resources include anything that is cash or can be turned into cash, such as art, mineral rights, stocks or other investments, and real property. In some situations, however, these resources can be excluded. SSI benefits are generally reduced dollar for dollar by any unearned income, such as a TANF, alimony, unemployment insurance, social security disability or retirement benefits. Earned income, from wages or self-employment, is treated more favorably. For example, a person who earns a wage of $750 per month may still be eligible, while someone who receives $750 per month in alimony may be ineligible. It is permissible, subject to regulations, to be employed and yet continue to receive SSI. Even if a person no longer receives SSI, due their wage or self-employment income being too high, they may still be eligible for Medicaid benefits, under what are referred to as 6019 provisions. An examination of eligibility for SSI also considers the income of deemers, for example, a spouse who lives with the recipient, a parent or parents who live with a child recipient or, in some cases, the sponsor of an alien. Social Security determines the first month of potential eligibility for SSI by the date of the intent to file an application for benefits as expressed to the Social Security Administration, and an application is filed within 60 days of the date of that expressed intention. To begin the process, people wishing to be considered must contact Social Security to set up a disability interview. No online application for SSI is currently available. However, one may apply for Social Security Disability or Retirement Benefits online and add the application for SSI via a telephone scheduled interview. Calls placed on the last day of the month, where the interview is scheduled for the second week of the following month, will result in SSI eligibility being retroactive to the month in which the call was made to set up the appointment, although the first check will not be received until the next month. For example, a person calls on January 31st to set up an appointment for February. January will be the month of application for determination purposes, but the first benefit check will be issued in February. Medicaid benefits usually begin the first month in which both medical and financial requirements are met. An immigrant, in order to qualify for SSI, must have been a legal resident of the United States before the Welfare Reform Act of 1996 took effect. Those who arrived after that date may be denied by SSI benefits. However, the regulations governing alien eligibility for SSI are complex and contain many exceptions. For instance, asylees, refugees, spouses of a member of the U.S. military, and some LAPR may be qualified aliens. A person who has been in LAPR status for at least five years has a valid I-551 issued by the Bureau of Citizenship and Immigration, and has been employed in the United States, may qualify. People wishing to learn whether they might qualify for SSI should contact the Social Security Administration to schedule an appointment for an interview. A person who is incarcerated for an entire calendar month is ineligible for benefits. If the person is in a medical facility, where at least 50% of their costs are paid by Medicaid, then their benefit may be reduced to $30. Equals calculation equals, calculation of an SSI benefit begins with the federal benefit rate. The FBR for 2015 is $733 for an individual and $1,100 for a couple. 
the initial benefit levels for SSI in 1972 was the same as the average monthly benefit as a retired worker under the Social Security Retirement Benefits Program. In August 1974 Congress established legislation to automatically increase SSI benefits by the same percentage and at the same time as Social Security Retirement, Survivors, and Disability Benefits. The benefit payable to a couple is smaller than the combined benefits payable to two individuals in order to take account of the fact that two people living together can live more economically than if each lived alone. However, the reduced SSI couple benefit applies only to those who are legally married, which gives beneficiaries an incentive not to marry. An issue of importance has been additional household costs caused by the disability of a beneficiary. The original concept of SSI was to ensure a minimum income. Research on household needs includes examining potential options to meet those needs. A major purpose of allowing a certain amount of assets was, to cover major costs of an urgent nature, such as to replace a furnace or another essential appliance. The costs of such items have increased considerably since 1989. Equals federal living arrangements equals, there are four living arrangements for SSI, A, B, C, and D. Living arrangement A is for an individual that has rental liability or buys their food separate from the rest of the household. Living arrangement B is for an individual that has no rental liability and does not buy his food separately. This is the most disadvantageous living arrangement. An individual will have a minimum charge of income deducted from their check. This is done because it is considered that an individual is being given income in the form of free housing and food. An individual in living arrangement B status will also be subject to more periodic reviews called redeterminations. This is done because it is common for a person in living arrangement B to eventually obtain rental liability or buy their food separately. Living arrangement C is for children living with at least one of their parents. In some cases it may be possible a child has another living arrangement. This happens when the child does not live with either parent. Living arrangement D is for individuals in facility where the Medicaid pays over 50%. A person is only due a check of $50 per month. This is because it considered that the individual has all his basic needs met. Equals deeming income equals. Beneficiaries by age, age 65 or older, 2,051,848, between ages 18 a euro 64 to 4,691,651, under age 18 to 1,258,533. Total beneficiaries 8,002,032. Beneficiaries and costs, year beneficiaries dollars, 1974, 3,996,064 a euro 5,096,813,000 1975, 4,314,275 a euro 5,716,072,000 1980. $4,142,017 a Euro 7,714,640,000, 1985, $4,138,021 a Euro, 10,749,938,000, 1990, $4,817,127 a Euro 16,132,959,000, 1991, $5,118,470 a Euro 17, $95,639,000, 1992, $5,566,189 a Euro 21,628,410,000, 1993, $5,991,153,000, 1994, $6,295,786 a Euro 25,291,087,000, 1995, $6,514,134 a Euro 27,037,280,000, 1996, $6,613,718 a Euro, 28,252,474,000, 1997, 
$6,494,985 a euro $28,370,568,000, 1998, $6,566,069 a euro $29,408,208,000, 1999, $6,556,634 a euro $30,106,132,000. 2000, $6,601,686 a euro $30,671,699,000, 2001. $6,688,489 a euro $32,165,856,000, 2002, $6,787,857 a euro $33,718,999,000, 2003. $6,902,364 a euro $34,693,278,000, 2004, $6,987,845 a euro $36,065,358,000, 2005, $7,113,879 a euro $37,235,000, 2006, $7,235,583 a euro. $38,889,000, 2007, $7,359,525 a euro. $41,205,000, 2008, $7,520,501 a euro. $43,040,000, 2009, $7,676,686 a euro $44,906,000, 2010, $7,912,266, 2011, $8,112,773, 2012, $8,262,877, 2013, $8,363,477. Pay assignment, generally, the person qualifying for benefits is determined to be capable of managing their own financial affairs, and the benefits may be dispersed directly to them. In the case of persons who have a diagnosed mental impairment which interferes with their ability to manage their own finances, the Social Security Administration may require that the person assign someone to be their representative payee. This person will receive the benefits on behalf of the disabled individual, and disperse them directly to pairs such as landlords, or to the disabled person, while providing money management assistance. The representative payee generally does not charge a fee for this service, especially if it's a friend or relative. Social service agencies who are assigned as payee are prohibited from charging a fee, though some private payee agencies do provide the service for a small fee. Some states and counties have representative pay agencies which receive the benefits on behalf of the disabled person's social worker, and disperse the benefits per the social worker's instructions. Potential residual benefits to other programs Once an individual qualifies for supplemental security income they automatically become eligible for several other assistance programs as allowed by federal and state law. An SSI recipient can receive benefits from all programs listed and they serve as a safety net for those on the program. Medicaid in order to help with the purchase of medicine and hospital care for the aged, blind, and disabled. Qualified Medicare beneficiaries, food stamps for the purchase of food. Depends on the individual a euro unregistered trademark s state of residence on how much they may receive in food stamps. Housing Choice Voucher Program more commonly known as HUD Section 8. SSI recipients automatically are entitled to Section 8 housing as they meet the low-income criteria yet they have to be approved by the Department of Housing and Urban Development. See also, Social Security, Social Security Disability Insurance, Income Support, a similar program operated in the United Kingdom, Richardson v. Perals, ADA Amendments Act of 2008. Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, Helvering v. Davis, Steward Machine Company v. Davis, 
Fleming v. Nestor, Goldberg v. Kelly, Michael J. Astru, Mixed Economy, Social Security Debate, Social Security Administration, Social Security Number, Social Safety Net, Disability Determination Services, Disability Fraud, Office of the Chief Actuary, Rehabilitation Act of 1973, Ticket to Work, United States Department of the Treasury, United States Welfare State, Welfare, Welfare Economics, Welfare Fraud, Welfare State, Sullivan v. Zebley. Notes. References. Social Security Administration. SSA's Program Operations Manual System HTTPS, SO44A90 Sargovoms NSF Part List. Open View. Accessed March 27, 2007. Note. This is the public version of POMS, the internal version is not available to the public, Social Security Administration. Supplemental Security Income. Publication number 5 to 11,000. August 2005. Social Security Administration. Tele-Service Representative Basic Training Curriculum, Supplemental Security Income. Publication number 25 to 1,560. April 2006. Social Security Administration HTTP, history 3 html HTTP, www.sargov1970 html, HTTP, www.sargov text other usi htm, HTTP, www.hargov HTTP, www.statehealthfacts.org slash Compare mappable.jsp question mark cat equal 4 ampersand and equal 253 pound notes dash 1, http, www.socialsecuritygov.csc index html, http, www.poaccessgovi11 budget social pdf, http, www.sargov research sub 109 html, http, www.sargov.doxy monthly index html external links social security administration webpage with information on ssi the social security act title 16 in particular